Shumai Friendly and welcome back to my channel. My name's Kate and Anwin for anyone who's new here and let's get back into building in Planet Zoo. And today I'm going to be finishing off the safari habitat. I've been slowly trying to fill out this safari habitat since the start of this African grassland zoo. So it's about time that I finish it off really. <laughs> and I wanted to give the animals more shelter. So I thought I would make like a traditional African village that's maybe situated just outside of the safari that's kind of been left or abandoned and the animals now use it because they aren't like closed off from it anymore. So I wanted to use the mud walls to make these round buildings so they're a little bit more traditional for South Africa more than North Africa because the buildings from the Africa pack are supposed to be more of a northern style of a building and I really like these mud walls and the round buildings. They're very similar to a traditional building in Wales, cob houses and cob houses are also made out of mud. I've seen maybe two or three, I can't remember, in a place called St Fagans and that is the Welsh History Museum. So it's got like lots of different houses from Wales from different times. So it'll go all the way back to cob houses and there's also a street that shows houses through the decades. So I think it starts in the 20s or 30s and then goes up to like the 70s. Yeah, I love St Fagans. It was always a school trip to St Fagans every year when I was in primary school. I don't... Mm, I think that might be elementary, like seven to 11. And every year in the summer, we would go to the history museum, but the cob houses that look kind of similar to these houses that I'm building here, always have fires in them. Like that's how the buildings would have kept being kept warm so there's usually a fire burning somewhere in these buildings so when I was building this I was always remembering like the smell of the inside of these buildings which always smelled like a log fire. I didn't want to necessarily make this exactly the same as some of the prefab blueprints but I was kind of looking at the blueprint to get some inspiration of how these buildings would be decorated and of course I wanted to make sure that they had the same sort of colour scheme as the whole zoo so everything would still blend in and fit in with the whole theme. So I wanted to decorate these buildings with lots of clutter items just to make it feel like at some point someone had lived inside this building and now it's just empty because the village had moved on and had left the buildings there for the animals to take over. And then once I was happy with the one building, I then duplicated that one to make it more of a village. I am going to do a few different variations of this small house and do a couple of different sizes and shapes of houses too. Even though quite a lot of villages in Wales have houses that look exactly the same, I wanted these to feel individual as well, so like each family that owned these houses decorated their home slightly different. I am also going to be including a few extra animals into this habitat, they don't necessarily benefit from sharing a habitat with any of the animals in here, but they do peacefully live with the other animals and it's always nice uh, to add some extra animals in each time I go into this habitat as well. So I'm trying to build a slightly larger building now that's still round 
and I'm using the same technique that I've used quite a lot in the past where you have two parallel objects and duplicate them with the advanced move tool and rotate them to create a circle. Not sure whether I was particularly happy with this. <laughs> I built this ooh, a week and a half ago now, maybe? Oh no. I've been pre-building because I'm going to be playing Life is Strange on my channel for however long it's going to take to go through the game and you would have seen one part of that by now if you were interested. I have posted the first part by the time this c comes up and that does remind me I am going to be changing my upload schedule as well and I'm going to be posting a video on Mondays as well as Wednesdays and Saturdays while I'm playing Life is Strange. But if you're not interested in any other games other than Planet Zoo, Planet Zoo speed builds will be up every Wednesday now instead of Wednesdays and Saturdays. The village took me seven and a half hours to finish. I had a lot of different ideas for this that I was playing around with and then that neatly gets edited into a 15 to 20 minute video so it's kind of tricky for me to get builds done at the same time as like recording and editing so that's why I took time last week to build a few habitats ready. I also got my hair done. <laughs> I always get like super excited when my hair is freshly dyed. I got a little bit of an extra boost of the purple. It was starting to get a little pink <laughs> as it was washing out and I absolutely love this. Purple is one of my very favourite colours. <laughs> but this larger circular building is perfect for the southern white rhinos because it has a larger entrance to it. And then I wanted something that was a lot larger than the individual houses and I wanted it to feel kind of like more of a community building than a really large home even though I had this one to be larger and kind of more of a rectangular shape I still wanted it to have like rounded walls and for it to fit in with the rest of the houses. While I was on my break something super exciting happened that I still can't quite believe even though it's been a little over a week since it happened. <laughs> the the of official Planet Zoo page has chosen my build for the Planzo Pride feature where they select a Pride themed build every month on the 28th to celebrate the continuation of Pride not just in June but throughout the year and for the very first Pride build for Pranzo Pride. I was chosen and I was super proud that my build was chosen but I was also super like freaked out. <laughs> it's like whoa that's me. <laughs> that's my build and because I wanted this part of the habitat to feel like it was separate from the rest of the habitat, I wanted to add like a fence in between the rest of the habitat and this small village. I just used the wooden habitat barrier for the fence and to make it curve around the safari ride I built it first with glass because the glass curves and the wood technically doesn't but if you build it with glass first and then replace it uh, replace the glass with wood the wood does actually curve but even though this village was meant to be kind of abandoned I wanted it to feel lived in at the same time so I wanted lots of different decorations with the pots and these beautiful bead decorations. I absolutely love these. I've added these into a few of my builds throughout the zoo. 
I absolutely love clutter. I used to put so much clutter into my builds when I'd build in The Sims. So adding all of these decorations and details into something like this makes it feel homey to me and lived in. I had this little space at the front of the village and I thought that would be a perfect space to plant some vegetables for like a veggie patch farm area. I built something similar for the peafowl habitat in the Southeast Asia Zoo and from my research I was having a look at some things that would be planted in traditional villages in different places in Africa and I found that they grow yams and pumpkins so I obviously don't have yams and I think yams are like sweet potatoes right we don't really have anything that's called a yam in the UK which I kind of thought would be like a sweet potato so I was trying to go for like a squash I don't know what you would call a squash in any other place in the world but I did have pumpkin uh, blueprints from the Steam Workshop and the name of the creator I will put on screen because I don't have that to hand at the moment and I will put the link to the blueprint for the pumpkins in the description and for the final part of the building of this little village I wanted somewhere where they would store their produce from their farm like a grain silo or something just to fill in that area and I didn't want these buildings to be somewhere where they would live necessarily just somewhere where they would keep their food supplies and of course it needed to be kind of close to where the farm was and the other thing I kind of wanted to include near the farm would be a well they would need a water source or somewhere closer by where they could collect water to water the plants and because this habitat has a river running through it I assume the well would be connected to the river and it was kind of tricky to find something that was small enough to put on top as like a mini roof for this kind of wishing well style well <laughs> but these roof toppers fit perfectly because I could just stack a lot of them next to each other and then to hide the spokes on top I used a small plank of wood in the center to make it look like it was one solid roof piece rather than lots of individual toppers on top of each other and finally I wanted to make some fire pits where the villagers would have gathered around for food. I've made something similar to this in the proboscis monkey habitat with some rocks to cover the edge of this fire pit and to mimic some flames so it looks like there's an actual fire in the little fire pit. I used the torches from the South America pack because we don't have a special effect for fire so just lowering the torches down gives the fire effect without seeing the torch and I couldn't really find any logs in the construction tab but the logs in the nature tab can be lowered into the ground nicely to look like little stumps so it can look like the village could sit around the fire and roast I don't know fish maybe kind of think of something that would be traditional and natural not marshmallows <laughs> And yeah, that's the pretties now. I did add in three new animals. The bongo, gems bark, I think it's gems bark, and okapi, okapi, which I'm gonna skip over because it took me a while to try to make their happiness as high as it could be without taking away from the happiness of the other animals in the habitat. They fit in with the animals and they don't fight with the other animals in this habitat but some of them are not from the grassland area so they needed different terrain painting. Uh, everything else was fine, they 
dislike some of the plants that I'd included, but they wanted different terrain in their habitat. We are also having a ride on the safari ride at long last. That has been months as well since I built that, but I wanted to finish off this safari habitat first. So we are finally having a ride on the safari ride itself that gave this habitat its name. <laughs> So uh, I'm gonna leave it off there, let me know what you think in the comments, are you happy with how this turned out? I know I definitely am, I'm glad I finally have had an idea for this final part of the safari habitat at least. There's gonna be more parts to this speed build series. And if you have any other ideas for some habitats for this African zoo, any animals from the African continent, I would totally appreciate that. Leave them in the comments as well. Uh, maybe double check that I haven't already done a habitat for them. I have a full playlist of this on my channel. So just have a quick scroll through that and see if I haven't already done a habitat for them. And if I have, great, you can already see it. <laughs> I hope you join me in playing Life is Strange on Mondays and Saturdays, but if you're just interested in Planet Zoo, I will see you on Wednesday. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, smash that like button, and if you haven't already and you would like to, it would mean a lot to me if you could subscribe and hit the bell to be notified whenever I upload a new video. <laughs> like I just said, I upload on Wednesdays and Saturdays and you are gonna have a bonus video on Mondays now as well. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Goodbye!